In this video on coordinate geometry of the line, we'll be graphing lines, and particularly lines that pass through the origin. Lines of this type look like this, ax plus by equals zero or y equals mx. And notice that in both cases, there's no constant in the equation. So that gives me a big hint that that type of line passes through the origin. To graph any line, I need two points. And in our last video on the intercept method, we found our points by figuring out where the line went through the x-axis and the y-axis. But with this type of line, it goes through the x and y axes at the origin. So using that method would only give us one point. So I need to find a second point some other way. Let's look at an example. We want to graph the line 2x plus 3y equals 0. Well, the first thing to note is that the line is in the format ax plus by equals 0. So this, this gives us a big hint about how the line looks. We know straight away just from the format, the fact that it's in the form ax plus by equals zero, the line must pass through the point zero, zero. And now I need to find a second point. Now, a line passes through many points, and all I have to do to find one of them is substitute a value into my equation for x, and then find the resulting answer for y. When I do that, that xy pair is a point on the line. But how do I know what to sub in for x? Well, in reality, I can put any value I like at all in for x. But in practical terms, it's good to put a number in that'll give me a nice answer out for y. And to be guaranteed that you'll get a nice whole number answer, go back to your equation again, and we want to sub in for x. Look at the coefficient of the other variable. So the coefficient of y is 3. And if I sub 3 in for x, it'll give me a nice whole number answer for y. Now, this isn't a hard and fast rule. I don't have to use this number, but by using this number, I'll get a nice answer out. So I'm going to note that I'm going to let x equals three, and then I'm going to substitute that in for x and see what I get. So when I substitute in, I get two bracket three plus three y equals zero. I'll multiply my brackets out here to get six plus three y equals zero. I'll bring the six across so it's a minus six. And I'll divide across by 3 to get my y value. So in this case, y is equal to minus 2. And then I'm going to pair up my x and my y to make a point. And this point is also on the line 2x plus 3y equals 0. So now I've got two points. I know from the format that the line goes through 0, 0. I know from my calculation that the line also goes through the point 3 minus 2. And now I can draw my xy plane, mark these points in and join them together. Pause the video here while you do that yourself. And then play and see that you're correct. So I've drawn my xy plane. I want to mark my points in. So of course, 0, 0, the origin is the first point. And my other point is the point 3 minus 2. So out to 3 and down to minus 2. So there's that point. And then I'll join them together to make the line. And this is the line 2x plus 3y equals 0. So now a question for you. And I'd like you to graph the line 3x plus 4y equals 0. So pause the video here while you do that and then play to see if you're correct. Okay, so let's run through our solution. So this line, if I have a look at it, it's in the form ax plus by equals zero. So I straight away know it goes to the point zero, zero. And now I need to find a second point. So I'll need to sub a value in for x. And I'd like to pick a number that'll give me a nice round answer. Although in reality, any value will work. So I'm going to look at my other variable, which is y. And its coefficient, four, is what I'm going to use to sub in for x. So I'll make a note of that, let x equals 4, and then I'll sub it in. So I've got 3 times 4 plus 4y equals 0, and now I want to get y by itself. I'll just do my multiplication first, and then I'll bring the 12 across the equal sign. And then I'll divide by 4 to get an answer of minus 3. And then I'll make my full point with my x and my y value together. So now I know that the point 4 minus 3 is on that line. Now I can go off and draw my xy plane and graph. So there's my xy plane, then I'll mark my points in, so I've got the point 0, 0. And then I've got the point 4 minus 3, so over to 4, down to minus 3. And there's that second point, and then I'll draw a line through them to finish off the question. And there's my line. Here's a second example. This time I want to graph the line y equals 2x. So again, the first thing I'll do is I'll look at the format of my equation. And I can see that it's written in the form y equals mx. You can think of the plus c being zero if you like, so I know the y-intercept is zero. But in any case, since I have no constant, I know that this line goes through the origin. 
And it's just interesting to note that if I was to sub zero in for x, I'd get zero out for y in this particular equation and equations of this type. So now, just like in the previous example in question, I'm going to have to find some other point on the line also. So what I'm going to do is identify the coefficient of y, which is one in this case, and then I'll sub that in for x. So I'm just flagging my intention to do that first, that x equals one, then I'll sub it in. So I'll have y equals two times one, and this is actually really simple. I just have to multiply two by one to get my answer. So y equals two is my solution. I can make my point really easily. So another point one, two is on that line, and then I can go off and draw my xy plane and graph. So do that now yourself and pause the video while you do it. So with my xy plane drawn, I'll mark my points in. Obviously, I know that it goes through the point zero, zero, so I'll mark that. That's the origin. And then I'll mark in the point one, two also. So out to one and up to two. And that's my second point on the line. And when I join my points together, this is what my line looks like. So now a question for you. I'd like you to graph the line y equals minus 3x. So pause the video here while you do that and then play to see if you're correct. Okay, so the first thing that I notice again is the format of my line y equals mx. So I know straight away this line goes through the point 0, 0. So I have one point got with no effort. And now I want to get a second point. So I identify the uh, coefficient of y and then I'll substitute that in for x. And again, just note that I'm flagging this really clearly. I'm labeling what I'm doing to make it clear what's happening in the question. And you should be doing the same. So letting x equals to one then, I'll say that y equals to minus three times one, which is really easy to work out. It's just y equals minus three. And then I have my x and my y, I can make my point. And now I can draw the graph. So I have my xy plane. I'm going to mark in my point zero, zero. I'm going to mark in my point one minus three, so out to one and down to minus three. And then I'll join those to make the line. And there we have the line y equals minus 3x. Just as a point of interest, let's note that with this line, we can read also from its equation that its slope is minus 3. And you can see here in the diagram that for every 1 I go across, I must go down 3 to stay on the line. So again, there's a connection between the graph, sorry, the equation of the line and how the graph looks in the diagram. Let's look at one more example. And this time we're looking to graph the line y equals to a half x. So again, we can clearly see the format y equals mx telling us that the line goes through the point zero, zero. And then we have to find our second point. But you'll notice here at a glance that this equation of the line has fractions in it. So that means that we'll probably get a fraction answer out when we substitute a number in. So a nice way of dealing with this is to take our equation and multiply the whole equation by something to eliminate a fraction. So to do that, just look for the denominator and multiply across by that. Just make sure to multiply everything in the equation by two then. So I'm going to end up with two y equals one x, and then I can proceed as normal. Now, again, you don't strictly have to do this. This is really just kind of making things easier for ourselves in a little while when we get to the graph, because drawing graphs with fractions in them can just be a little bit of a nuisance. So we're making it easier from that perspective by sticking with whole numbers. So I see that my coefficient of y is two, and I can substitute that in then for the x. So I'll flag that by saying let x equals two, and I'll sub it in, and when I multiply, I get 2y equals 2, so y equals 2 over 2, or just 1. Then I'll put the x and the y together to make the point, so the point 2, 1 is on the line, and now we can draw the graph. Pause the video now and do that bit yourself. So here I have my xy plane, I've marked the origin, the point 0, 0, I've marked the point 2, 1, and then I've joined them to make my line. And now here's a final question for you. This time I want you to graph the line y equals minus two thirds x. Pause the video while you do that and then play to see if you're correct. So we know from the format of the line that it must go through the point zero, zero. And now to make our own lives a little bit easier, we're gonna try and get rid of this fraction. So to do that, I'm just multiplying by the denominator and I'll multiply everything in the equation. And I'll end up with 3y equals minus 2x. And just to point out, if any, at any stage you're a bit iffy about multiplying the fraction by the number, you can always type that into your calculator. So minus 2 over 3 times 3. Now I'll identify the um, coefficient of y and I'll sub that in for x. And when I do that, I'll get 3y equals minus 2 times 3. And then I'll multiply and divide across by 3. And so I get a solution for y of minus 2 there. And then, of course, I'll put the x and the y together to make the point. And then we'll draw the graph. 
So now that I have my xy plane, I'll mark my points in, starting with my origin, which is just 0, 0, and then the point 3 minus 2, so out to 3 and down to minus 2, and then I'll join those to make the line. And again, it's just interesting to take this final diagram and compare it to the original equation that we had. So we know from looking at this equation that the line should have a slope of minus 2 over 3. And if we look at our diagram, we can see that for every three boxes we move across, we go down two boxes. So that slope has been maintained in my diagram. I can see it clearly there, the coefficient of x in the equation.